Hey guys, Jeff Reef Tank here, giving you an update. This is my November update for 2018. I'm gonna basically take you from left to right of my tank, uh, from the main viewing pane. Um, let's see, you might be able to see I have a little uh, green slime algae on my MP60. Uh, you can see it there next to the glass. This glass, it seems to be some type of uh, bacteria that's growing and then you, can see, you may be able to see it on the sand I just did a pretty much a cleaning off the rock um, a lot of maintenance but uh, that's been affecting my tank a little bit I did dose fucanosol for pyrapsis a couple of months ago and I had to do a second round because the refugium still had remnants of the priopsis in it. So right now I put Kato in a tank around roughly a month and a half ago. Um, normally I can't keep Kato, but um, this is not my Kessel light, but this is just a fluorescent light that I have lighting the sump. And you can see it's growing seems to be growing up and out, so that's why it's hitting air and dying off. Um, but yeah, so this is around a month and a half, like I said, and I'm gonna see how this is gonna go out. And hopefully it's not dying and putting nutrients back into the tank. But um, perhaps this uh, seems to be still around a little bit in the sump. I think it was the fact that I shut down and bypassed my refugium. When I did realize I had bariopsis, I think I um, uh, may have missed the first dosing of it, basically bypassed it, not realizing that it has to be in the system um, as it's treated, part of the system as it's treated, and you have to have light. So I did shut off the lights, and I did basically bypass it. That's why I hit it for a second time. Uh, let's see a little bit. Some bubbles. Not sure what that is, but hopefully it's going for good. And I will take it from there. That's my parasolic pump with my calcium reactor. Working wonders. Actually, this thing is for the $250 I spent for it. Um, swing it around the other side. It really is well worth its money because uh, this little guy here, uh, this is my trip rate. It's a little hard to see, but um, this little guy here, once I set it, 15 milliliters per minute, it is rock solid uh, from the time I set it. I've actually noticed um, that the fluent rate had slowed down um, and stopped dripping. And as I'm looking to see what happened, um, I saw a thick paste coming from the calcium reactor through the lines and it was able to push the paste out um, it looked like toothpaste basically, that's how thick it was. Push the paste out of the fluent line and free itself. So this little guy is really good. It's hard to see him in there, but um, that's probably the, one of the best investments that I had um, on my tank. It really helps out and avoids the up and down, back and forth, going back and forth to my calcium reactor. That was a big pain in the butt. It never really stabilized until I was able to um, change the pump. So, coming back around. Um, so this coral here is a coral that I got uh, recently. And it's RTNing as you could probably see. So, the issue with that is um, that it's a little different. I have the same coral on this side. And this guy's doing fine, no issues, been in the tank for a couple of months, but it forced me to go ahead and check my parameters. I've been kind of lazy and just taking, just taking tests for alkalinity. Um, it's been pretty steady around 9.5, and something told me to check my magnesium. Like magnesium was at 1080. So obviously that's way, way too low. Um, I thought I was good because I'm using uh, salt that has around 11, 11.5 dKH magnesium, and I must have changed uh, around 80 to 90 percent of my water 
after dosing for Conosol. So um, I thought I was fine, but uh, lazy reefing, for some reason my mag was low. So I've been buffering it back up and uh, it seems to be slowing down as far as the RTN. So I'll see how that goes. Keep an eye on that coral, but there's no other um, effects on any other corals as far as um, RTN is concerned. Um, all the corals are doing pretty good. No issues. Uh, this guy here is growing like a monster. Um, this is really giving me my showpiece. I can see it really likes the tank. Um, yeah, clam is doing good. Um, I did take these two pieces of rock out because it really had hair algae growing from the cracks and the crevices. So and overall, it's mostly gone, um, which is a good thing. A couple more corals here, no issues. You can see some of the blue tips there showing growth, which is excellent. Uh, this green slimer is about to be too big for the frag rack. Um, yeah, so speaking of that, I have 103 colonies and frags total so far that I've collected um, throughout all my searching on the internet and everything and um, everything is doing very well um, as you can see I'm crossing on the frag racks um, you know, these, this guy is something I got from Tidal Gardens so everything is really um, really doubling in size uh, all the Rico's frags here doing very well everything is encrusting so um, my next step is to go ahead and start to make sure my rockscape is finalized and do a little minor tweaking. I did take a lot of the rock out, the small pieces of rock, just to make sure I had good flow. Um, speaking of flow, this is a new addition. Um, just the fact that I saw the slime growing on the sand, I said, you know what, let me get a, uh, another power head here. This way I can keep the flow going because uh, I have uh, my two returns there. Roughly 6,000 gallons per hour going through the system from the two return pumps that I just replaced, brand new ones. So those are going very well. Uh, replaced my old hammerhead, uh, my reef floor hammerhead that had rusted out, the shaft rusted out and started leaking. But um, other than that, all the cores are doing pretty good. Um, there was some long green hair algae here, but it was like little clusters. It wasn't as bad and widespread as it was in the past, so I think um, give it a couple more weeks and the things are still looking good, I'm going to go ahead and start to place these corals um, throughout the aquarium. Um, that green slime, it's a little hard to see, but you can see it there, um, really is a concern. I'm just hoping that it doesn't start to spread and I have another issue. Um, I did treat for uh, red slime and uh, that treatment didn't work. So it's really not um, something that I know exactly what it is. Anybody that doesn't know what it is, can you please let me know? Uh, give me another close up here. Lights are starting to go out, but you can see it on the frag rack there. Uh, very light slime. And it has been uh, creeping up some of the corals and uh, not looking good. But um, I'm hoping it stopped now, whatever it was, and it was a side effect from um, every, every action is a reaction. So I'm hoping that it's gonna balance itself out, give it some time and uh, see how it goes. But yeah, these are some new corals that I um, put in the tank recently. Tidal Gardens, as you can see, these two frags are the same size and this one is exploding, so. I know Purple Monty Cap um, really doesn't show as much color as I had when I first got it, so that's been, gonna be my next thing. Once I get everything situated, how do I start to get the color to come back out of these frags um, to match what I saw on the internet and what I did first get when I got these corals in. A lot of them have started to fade, but um, let's see what happens. I think it may be low nutrients um, I have zero nitrate and 0 0.02 to 0.01 phosphate, so um, fluctuates on, on occasion. But yeah, so that's 
as far as the livestock's concerned, there was one coral that I noticed um, when I was taking some photos. Uh, I'll show it to you here. It is green acro. I just took it out, it looks a little angry. I just took it out to uh, inspect it. Um, so it's starting to slime. But um, I noticed on the bottom, let's see if I can point it out, right there, I noticed um, there was some discoloration and it uh, didn't seem to be normal. So I took it out and took it and put it under my uh, magnifying, my lit magnifying glass. And uh, I noticed it seems like uh, right in the crevice there, there seemed to be um, something strange looking. So I took it out and uh, dipped it. And sure enough, it was acro eating flatworms. Um, that is coral I got from a reputable place. Um, and anytime I get a coral without a base, um, especially when I get it from this particular location, um, it doesn't seem to, to really have a need to dip. I inspect very closely, but apparently uh, right in the crevice there was acro platform. So this was in my main display. Um, I see nothing else happening as far as any other corals, um, but uh, it was around three or four pretty big ones that were in, in that crevice. Um, so yeah, so right now, this is around two weeks since I discovered them and dipped them. I took all the rest of the frags out of this, this guy and um, just make sure if it is something that uh, will start to spread that I have nothing else that it's going to spread to. Um, this coral was isolated on a rock um, right in the main display, so it was pretty much by itself. So um, really not too, too concerned with it um, as far as the effect for the entire tank. So I will uh, definitely keep my eye out, but uh, so far so good. So that's that. This is um, this is the cluster of corals that I did have in the frag tank. Uh, so really not getting any polyp extension on any of them. So I think it's because just the fact that I just recently put them in a tank, like I said, a week and a half ago, two weeks now. So everything else is looking fine, fluffy, and really uh, looking good. So yeah, so that's going to be my next project is as the lights start to go down. Um, yeah, deciding what I'm gonna place where, and I really wanna get rid of the frag plugs to do it right, um, ideally, but I have to see if I'm gonna cut them that far back or I might just put the frag plugs in or um, really disguise them because I don't like to look at the frag plugs on the rock. You know, make it look as natural as possible, so we'll see how it goes. All right, so that's my update for the month of October. Taking it slow, um, tremendous progress for those who want to look back at some of my old videos and see this place, this tank was like a planted tank. It was full of green hair algae, full, full, full. So definitely um, proud of myself, the fact that I was patient enough and not restart this tank. Got some great advice from uh, Rico, Rico's Aquarium and um, really took a while for it to uh, settle in, but it's starting to settle in now. And um, yeah, my challenge right now is to keep my Kato alive. So, um, yep, pretty much cut the beating. I do two cubes, well, a cube and a half. Um, the mysis is a small, like a half size cube, and the brine shrimp um, every other day. And then um, I alternate between that every other day, two cubes every other day, and then one three and a half, four inch square of nori. On the, on the alternate days. So that's pretty much all I feed between this tank and uh, that one. I have a little damsel in there. But that's pretty much it. So thank you guys for following along. If you want to continue to watch the progress of this 300 gallon office tank, please uh, hit that um, subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, and I will continue to update you guys on my journey. All right. Hope all your tanks are doing well, and I will talk to you guys soon. Later.